Hello, today we are going to talk about binary trees. So your first question is probably, what is a binary tree? Um, well, simply, it's a tree. Uh, if you know what a tree is already, good. If you don't, then you'll have to look up one of the other videos that we've created. Uh, a binary tree is a tree with each node having at most two children. Uh, hence the, the term binary. Okay, so here is a uh, simple uh, al algorithm that you can uh, use to create a bi binary tree. Uh, this is written in Java. Yeah, but you could use it in other languages as well. And as you can see, uh, there is a variable to store the value you would have on, on the left side if anything would be stored there, and the value you would have stored on the right side. The nice thing about binary trees is that you know that each node can have at most two children. Therefore, you can have a variable for each one, and you don't have to uh, second guess yourself on how many possible children each node can have. Okay, when you are making a tree, uh, there are different ways of uh, being traversing the tree, that is to search the tree or to output the tree, or to, to uh, find each element in the tree. The first one we're going to talk about is pre-order traversal. Uh, what this means is that the, uh, you would start at the node, you would go down the, uh, the tree as normally, and the node that you're, you start at is processed first, or outputted first. And then after that, the children are, are processed recursively, starting from the left tr uh, and then to the right. Uh, here I show an algorithm that uh, does this recursively. And if we were to look at this visually, well here I have a tree as an example. And you could see I would start with the top node, th that's where you always start. And for pre-order traversal, you would output that right away. So you would write A, then you would go to the left child, which would be then B, and then there's you still go down to C, and there's no more children after C, so you'd go back up and go to the right child, which is D, and again, no more children there, so you'd go back up to the right child of A, which would output E, then F, then G. Post-order tra traversal. This means that each node is processed after the children are processed recursively. So it's almost the opposite of what we uh, showed you. Uh, and here's an algorithm for it. If we were to look at this visually, here I have a tree again, and it would output, you would look at G first, but you would not output G, you would then, you want to output the left child, so you would go to C. But then you would go to, to the, before you output C, you, you have to output the left child of C, which is A. A has no children, so you would output A. Okay, now you have to output the right child of C, which is B. And that's all the children C has, so now you would output C. Then now you would go back to G, but you have to output the right children of G, which would be D, and then E, then F, and then you would output G. Okay, the third and last tra traversal is in-order traversal. Uh, this me means you would basically read the tree in order, uh, assuming that the tree is in, in order to begin with. Uh, so you would read the left child, and then the current node, and then the right child. If your tree is sorted in order, then uh, this will output the list in uh, the desired order that the tree already has. So here's an algorithm for it. That is, again, done recursively. And here is an example. So I would output A, and then B, then C, then D, E, uh, oh, sorry, G, and then E, and then F. You see I uh, changed the letters here to confuse you a little bit. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, one way to uh, use a binary tree is to use it to store arithmetic expressions. Uh, you can use uh, make simple expressions using the tree. Uh, to do this, the value of a node uh, would be obtained by applying the corresponding operator to the children. 
the leaves uh, are always uh, the the numbers uh, that would be stored in the tree, and uh, the rest would be the and the the other nodes would store the different operands that, that can be that are applied to the numbers. So here's an example. You see I have a, a binary tree. And uh, you see I have A, B, X, and Y are stored at the leaves at the end. Uh, the, we'll assume those are variables that store numbers. Uh, above that we have different uh, operand symbols. Uh, two pluses and a minus. And you can see here by the equation here that uh, tells us what this means. The A plus B would uh, be to together uh, calculated. And then it would be that minus uh, what's on the right side. It, it looks pretty straightforward. Now uh, we talked about the different traversals you can do, pre-order, post-order, and in-order. Uh, note that you can use these uh, different uh, ways to traverse the tree to rewrite the uh, equations uh, of the tree. So if you did it by pre-order, you would go uh, the minus sign, and then the plus sign, and then the A, then the B, then the plus sign, and X and Y. Likewise, if you did it in post-order, it would be A, then B, then plus, then X, then Y, then plus, and then minus. And if you did it in order, it would be identical to what you just saw before, uh, except the brackets wouldn't be there. You would have to ins insert the brackets yourself. You can insert brackets uh, around each uh, left and right node of what you're ca calculating. Okay, now we are going to talk about binary search trees. Well, that's a binary tree where the elements or numbers stored in each node are arranged in order. Uh, in this case, if they are numbers, they can be in numerical order, or if they're letters or words they can be in alphabetical order and so on. Uh, each, each element that then is compared to each other uh, by using the element stored in the node. And here's an example. Uh, if we were to print this uh, tree here that you have in order, then in order you would get 1, then 5, then 6, then 10, 15, and 17. So you could see that, that this list is in order if we used in order traversal. Now how would you uh, ins insert that? Well, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, implementation. Uh, how would you implement a binary search tree? Well, it's the same as a binary tree. You would have a reference to the left subtree, the right subtree, and it would be easier if you had a reference to the parent uh, node uh, for each node. But also you need a fourth ele element called the key. And that's going to be a variable that stores the value of the number that you're currently lo looking at. Now if you're searching a, a binary search tree, how, how would you go about searching it? Say, say if you're looking for a certain number, how would you search and find that number in the tree? Uh, uh, well, 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 it's pretty simple. So, uh, you would c compare the number you're looking for to the first node at the top of the tree. If it's less than the element of the current node, you would go to the left subtree. If it's greater than the element of the current node, then you would go to the right subtree. And then you continue this process until you either find the tree or you reach a, a point where the there are no more no nodes to uh, follow down, in which case it does not exist in the tree. And here's some code for it. Uh, pseudocode. Uh, here's a property for you. Uh, if you're looking for the maximum and minimum value of the tree, uh, obviously the maximum uh, tree uh, node would be s stored in the rightmost node and the minimum would, would be in the leftmost node. Now if you're looking for the successor of a key or the successor to a node, uh, what does that mean? Uh, successor means that it would be the node with the smallest key that is still greater than the current uh, key you're looking at. Uh, here's uh, some pseudocode for it. 
Okay, for example, if uh, we were looking at this tree here that we have in front of us, and we're looking at the node 5, well, we could say that 10 is the maximum key uh, uh, if you're looking at the subtree that starts at 5, and 8 would be the successor to uh, 5. Now, we're going to talk about the predecessor of the key. This is almost the opposite of uh, the su su successor. Instead of looking for the next one, uh, it, you would look for the previous one to the node that you're currently looking at. So here, if we're looking at the node 19, and you're, you're looking at the tree uh, to it, 14 uh, would be the pre predecessor, and 10 would be the minimum key in that tree. Okay, now uh, we're going to consider how would you insert something to the binary search tree. Well, if uh, the element that you are currently trying to insert is less than the element in the current node, it has to be inserted somewhere in the left subtree. If the element is greater than the element in the current node, it has to be inserted in the right subtree. And you uh, repeat steps 1 and 2 until you eventually find a node with an empty subtree, in which case the, uh, you uh, insert the node there. And here's some pseudocode for it. And here's an example. Uh, suppose we are inserting 14 for the first time. Uh, you would compare 14 to 10. Well, 14 is greater than 10, so you c go to the right tree. You would compare it to 15. Well, it's less than 15, so you would go to the left of 15. There was nothing uh, at first that was stored uh, to the left of 15. So that's where you insert 14. Now, uh, deletion in a binary search tree. The d deletion is a, s a simple idea. You search for the item that you wish to be deleted the same way that we previously talked about, and then you would delete it from the tree. Uh, but we have uh, one problem here. Suppose that the item that you were trying to, to delete has a child, or what if it has two children connected to it? Well, if you delete that node right away, then everything that else that was connected to it would also be deleted. So you have to consider that. How? Well, if you have one child, then that child would take the place of the, the parent that is to be deleted. And that's all you have to do. If you have two ch children uh, attached to the node, then, well, visually, you would see that you would take the successor or the predecessor and uh, use that to replace the current node that you are deleting. Okay, here's some uh, pseudocode for it. Uh, now, uh, notice uh, here, uh, in this part, where you are finding the, the successor, and, and instead of deleting the node that we are trying to, to delete, we actually replace the value stored at that node with the successor's uh, value, and then we delete the successor. Uh, the, this uh, causes less confu confusion. We don't have to uh, rearrange the nodes entirely. Uh, this way, it's a bit easier. Okay, moving on. If we have an example, if we were to delete 5 from this simple tree that I made, well, if you look at 5, 5 does not have any uh, children attached to it, so you would just del delete 5 and you're done. In this tree, if you want to delete 6, well, 6 has one uh, node attached to it, that's 7, and so you would uh, replace uh, se 6 with 7 and then you would be done. Okay, suppose you want to delete uh, 5 from this tree. 5 has two children, or two branches uh, from it. So what do you do? Well, you would take the successor, or the predecessor, uh, whichever one is up to you. And in this case, I'm taking the successor, which is 6, and I'm re replacing uh, 5 with 6. And notice that everything that was attached to 6 originally uh, falls in place. Uh, uh, there is a uh, problem here. Suppose you had... 6 only has a, a right node, 7. But what, what if it had a left node? If it did have a left node, then... Uh, notice that... Uh, the Well, you can't have 4 as a left node, then you would be missing something. So the left node would have to be rearranged accordingly. 
uh, you would probably make the left node attach somewhere to, to the left of 6. So you would rearrange that with uh, 4. Okay, that's uh, everything I have to talk about uh, for binary trees. I hope you learned something today, and we'll see you next time.